All right, so this is probably going to get a lot of um, hate comments, I guess you could say toxic comments. But um, as I've been playing through the season and doing the different activities, I, I have decided I, this is the first time that I, mean, I actually submitted to get a refund on my Lightfall um, pre-order. Uh, because I, I, I seriously don't think Bungie is doing anything to take care of the core game, uh, nor show respect to the veteran players uh, and, and, and players that have been around for years uh, paying money, not the free-to-play players, not the blueberries, not the casual uh, players, but the actual people that show up to play the game and do things. And it's starting to show in the uh, in the game, right? Uh, I, I remember playing in Destiny 1 where I could go in and I can be light 400. And the only way that you're going to be 400 light is if you feed, finished a raid, right? You did the last raid and everything else. So you got those five extra points of light. Uh, but what I want to show you now is some of the reasons I think that... Um, or Bungie's losing it. I don't know if any, how many recognize, remember the movie uh, Office Space, right? Uh, and Jennifer Aniston's working at the bar and she has the minimum number of pieces of flair, but there's more. And Bungie's idea used to be in D1, uh, you would do an activity, you would get a reward. Strikes, strike loot, nightfalls, loot, raids loot raids meant something it showed that if you completed the raid the current raid you were you were an end gamer you were the top five and i'm talking pve right now i'm not going to talk pvp at the moment but pve wise it means you took the time you had a team you figured it out you got it done you got in and uh that was a status symbol that's five points of light not overwhelmingly bad it wasn't going to make or break the game but the only way to do it was to to actually accomplish the raid and it mattered it made a little enough of a difference you know and, and those other players that would give them something to chase after whereas in d2 now everybody can get to the light no problem no problem whatsoever uh, i mean there's a chest you can get to like it took me a day and a half two days to get to 1580 when the season reset okay maybe three days or, or so minus one or two pieces but by the second week, all three of my characters were, were 1580. Um, and now if I go in, there's, there's, if I run the raid, uh, red boxes. Okay, that's, that's fantastic. Master raid the adept weapons versus enhanced craftables. Eh, there's still meta weapons and play styles that people prefer um, and everything. But the, they're like, oh, be a day one raider. You can get an emblem. You do this activity, you can get an emblem. Do you see how many emblems? Oh, see, seasonal, there's four pages of emblems. Account, there's two pages. General, there's four pages. Competitive, there's two pages. Gambit, Gambit shouldn't even be in the game. Strikes, there's four pages. World, there's four. Uh, and, and then you go activities for shaders, the number of shaders in the game, which cost, I still think, sure, we should have that many shaders. Let us have a little more creative control over the coloring. But then you can look at the transmogs, you can look at the masks, and you can look at all this collectible stuff that means absolutely nothing to me. And you go, oh, you got the triumphs. Ha, huh, I'm a ghost rider, whoop the freaking dude. I went out, I did the activities, I played the game. I didn't get anything special out of it, I just got a title that said, yeah, you 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 made, you completed the seasonal one. Yeah, look, you're... You, you're you, you managed to get uh, Flame Keeper, uh, Gilded Progress on the Flame Keeper stuff. Or, yeah, you know, Duality. Oh, yay. Whoop the freaking Duda. You, you completed it. Uh, and Duality still busted. I still don't have all the red boxes out of there, so I can't complete the weapons. Um, I had to go solo flawless, and then even after doing that, it took me a few more weeks of running it consistently just to get the dang exotic sword, which is crap but I wanted it for my collection. 
The reality of the situation, one of the reasons I think the game is dying so much is they've taken away that carrot on the end of the stick that a lot of the end gamers, the hardcore players want in the game. We don't content. The game's huge. If you start this game brand new, never having played it before, there's a ton of content. But there's a lot of easy catch up mechanics that you can just just quickly do it. Uh, Swesticles did it less than 24 hours. He took a brand new account and was King's Fall ready. OK, that was just it's that simple. And he was doing most of that stuff. solo. yeah, I knew what he was doing. But if a player wanted to, they could get it, get it knocked out in a couple of weeks. That's normal for people playing the game. But what about the people that have spent money on this game every year, a couple times a year uh, that have been playing the game since launch or even going back to Destiny 1? We've seen the changes. And they constantly talk about those changes. And it means very, very little to us, Bungie's twabs, where they talk about, oh, we're going to make this change to crafting, or we're going to make this change, or we're going to do this. Nothing that's been asked for by m the majority of the community. Okay? Nothing like that. I don't remember asking for this. I don't remember asking for that. It would be, be nice, yeah. And like today's twab, where they were talking about uh, the Lightfall crafting, the next season's crafting, and, and or Deep Sight crafting, and that stuff. I think that's cool, and they're, they're streamlining a little bit. That has nothing to do with uh, Endgame for me. Yeah, it removes the fact that all it is right now is log in, play that you can get the proper RNG, and then go live in Shirochi Checkpoint to level up your weapons. Um, because heaven knows if you play with the weapon on, and it's not properly specced, and it's low level or under, under level, so you can't get the things on it that you need, like level 12 or 16, um, you're probably not going to use it because it jacks up your DPS and jacks up the play style. So it's, it's, it's complicated. You don't really want to run with it. You don't want to run the same thing over and over again because let's face it, I haven't done any strikes. I did the strikes that were required. I didn't do them for a pinnacle. I didn't need to do pinnacles for, for, for any of that stuff. If it's, it's the quest line required it, which is a forced quest line, then sure, there you go. I mean, look at the number for the season of the haunted we had to come in, right, and do um, 100 Headless Ones. That's not so bad. There's a few things. That 17,000 candies. You got this one was a pain in the butt it would just because you had the RNG, Mystery Meat, Epic Boss Bags. That was cheap. But then you had the Sniper Kills. And this is all I did was go into Shirochi to get these ones. And then you've got... Ritual activities, strikes, crucible matches, and gamma matches. One match equaled 3%. 3%, y'all. 3%. That's what? Um, just an unrequired number of... Um, strikes that you had to do when you had to have... Sorry, I was answering a text message. And you had to do vanguards or catch a crash, right? And this was much faster, but uh, it, it, it kind of added to this one, but it kind of didn't. So people running catch it didn't catch towards that one. But having to do 34, 33 to 34 strikes, gambit matches or crucible matches just to get that one done was just, just a grind. And it was made just to fill time. There was no real reward to it. So you can get all this stuff done. And after you've completed it, you get what? A title. That's it. Oh, wait, there's weapons. The sniper's not bad, but they gave you the PvP sniper, and it's it's great rolls, but snipers and PvP are kind of crap. Uh, not that I play PvP or anything. But then you, you go and you look at things like the rewards for the time played um, versus the number of bugs. Like, I went out and I got um, the new Titan armor pieces this year, or this season, and they got disabled, and they got turned into crap. And you got the same thing going on with one of the the um, chest pieces for the hunter. It's been disabled. The sheer number of bugs, like um, when the season came out, uh, I kept track of the number of bugs. And, that, and I'm not talking little minute bugs, but by the time the first week was over, we had I had compiled like a list of like 23 or 24 pretty massive bugs or issues that I found w with the game. And their twabs do nothing to address what they're doing to fix those. 
network connectivity errors where it says check your network. Oh, I'm sorry, Bungie, my network's just fine. Get your error code straightened out because it's your freaking connectivity causing the problems. Or my friends that do forensics for a living, a couple of them reporting because I, I don't just use my gaming PC uh, for gaming. I run virtual labs on it. I do forensic analysis on it. I do schoolwork on it. I do educational training on it. I'm always trying to learn more. Anybody that knows me will tell you that. And there's software programs that I use on here for forensics and memory forensics and data analytics and all that other stuff that when running are used to um, analyze and give me some ideas of what's going on inside of my memory, inside of my network, inside of packets that are captured and all this other stuff. And you have this game called Destiny 2 with this program called Battle Eye that is so aggressively tuned that it went after a couple of professional forensicators, as they're called, forensic analysts for a living, that just simply had a program installed on their PC called Ida Pro, and they got banned because it was on there and they and it wasn't running, it was just installed. There's nothing illegal about me having purchased software, a full licensed software package on my PC. The intrusive nature of what Bungie is now doing with their battle eye shows that they're going beyond their sandbox for their game and looking at your system. But if you go and you call them out on it, or if you try to run something on it, you might be breaking the terms of service, which they get to change whenever they want. And if you want to, if you played the game for 4,000 hours, they can still change the terms of service. And you lost all that time played. If you disagree with it, they're just like, well, if you don't like it, you can kiss that butt. So that needs to be fixed. Something needs to do about that. And they're not the only ones guilty of making changes to the terms of service at the whim, but if you want to try and figure out what's going on to the system, to your system, or why there's such blatantly bad, bad game performance on just, just the PC in general, and you try to dig around, you're, you're a cheater, and you're automatically either warned or banned, actually. And you're not even warned. You just get a ban, which is wrong. So they need to they need to look at the evaluate and where they're, they're going. I can tell you right now, like a lot of the performance issues on a PC, because I do have... Uh, my network monitored for network traffic, NetFlow, as well as I do monitor all the processes and ProcMon and everything else running on my, on my PC. My anti-malware is a uh, user behavior analytic based and does more than signature and can tell you when um, certain protocols and certain executables and stuff like BattleEye is running out of Bungie's realm. And, and they have no reason whatsoever to be checking my browser or my active browser connections, period. That's not their game. I'm sorry. Stay inside the game. Uh, they don't need to be hitting my network traffic. Everyone, all these cheaters out there and exploiters trying to use NetLimiter, which has been around since 2005, by the way, 2005, 2006. But because of that, all of a sudden Bungie decided, hey, we're going to we're going to monitor network traffic at the at the NIC. And they're going to slow down all my traffic. So if I'm playing the game and all of a sudden I'm also streaming on a second monitor uh, to like Twitch or something or I have another one up and I'm trying to watch YouTube videos. <laughs> All that stuff's getting hit because they're they're intercepting all those packets, trying to determine is there a cheat packet going on? Mm, keep that stuff inside the game. There's a balance, and you cannot violate the person's privacy. And they haven't done anything to statement on that. They haven't done anything to clarify that. And they hide behind this thing, saying, "Oh, we don't want the bad guys knowing or the threat actors knowing what we're doing. We want to protect ourselves so they can't exploit us further." Um, you can. And you can remain silent, but you can also tell and state what you're doing to keep the user safe from malicious activity and nefarious activity from the developer. But we don't get any statements like that. We get stupid twabs about weapon changes and weapon nerfs and all these other things. And we we, we get almost no reason. I mean, we finished the raid challenge for Oryx Master last week. My team's done. And I can tell you of the team that I have... Um, that does that stuff and then three of those guys or four of them have all gotten day one raids right i don't bother with it anymore because taking time off during the during the week i'm my one day of my vacation time is nowhere near worth the exchange rate of a one day raid for an emblem i'm sorry i don't need that crap i'm not going to burn a day of vacation for a stupid emblem and a stupid triumph potential no not worth it in my book not at all uh, there's nothing in this game that says it's hard. Grandmaster Nightfalls, when you can get everything done for the season and knocked out on the day they come out in less than three hours with your team, they're not hard anymore. I'm sorry. They're a joke. Oh, and they oh, they give the they give the weekly weekly weapon. 
uh, and it's an adept. Uh, nine times out of ten, it's crap weapons with really bad rules on it, so it's not even worth going after. People are still going to go after crafted. Um, but it's, again, not a hard thing to do. You'll have five rates, five grandmasters that are pretty easy going, then you might have the sixth one that might take you a, a couple of runs to get it figured. That's usually the max. But if, if, most of the time, most people are done inside two to three hours. You can go all these streams, streamers, the bigger, bigger um, Destiny 2 streamers, and you can see them just knock it all out. Same thing with the raid. Tell me what in about the raid is there that makes me any different from any other player. There's nothing. I got a ship and I got a sparrow. Those are kind of cool. The ship looks cool, which is on my screen, and the sparrow is not bad, but I don't use the sparrow because, um, let's face it, the Scourge of the Past Sparrow, fastest thing in the game. Why would I take that off? Absolutely no reason to take off that sparrow. It's just, I'm not going to slow myself down and use other sparrows. This is not worth it. So you've got no reward for doing endgame. None. None whatsoever. Players can go in and do whatever activity they want. They're going to still get the cap on a light level, and they can do transmog for a cost or anything like that. Uh, but there's nothing in the game to keep someone interested in continuously playing. Strikes? Let me, let's see here. Look, let me pull up the, the directory, okay? <sighs> Strikes, come on. Oh, see, there's lag too, by the way. That's... We're going to talk about performance in a second. This video is a little long, but um, strikes, blue, glimmer, and, and blue drops usually. Gambit, a really prolonged set of matching because you can invade and kill and evade and kill, and the and the invaders overpeed with the shout, the the the, um, the overshield and all that stuff. And people I've seen matches and been in matches this season alone because of the triumphs we were trying to get done that lasted twenty to twenty five minutes because an invader just kept done and killing, and then we would go in and repeat and rent. It just took so long. And then you have S uh, SBMM and Crucible and non-competitive matchmaking, um, which means no marrying whatsoever. But there's nothing of these three things here, and Crucible just keeps giving you the same stupid fusion rifle over and over again. So where's the where's the reward for playing? There's no there's no reward. Oh, but you get the triumph. Triumph means nothing to me. It's not gear. Uh, well, but you can get pinnacles from doing that. So if you're chasing pinnacles, you might do it for the first couple of weeks of a season when the light's been increased. But after that, there's really no reason to do it whatsoever. Legends is where you're going to go do the old raids. Vault of Glass. Okay, I go get Vex Mythic Glass. But the armor, I can still get I can still get capped armor elsewhere. And the perk that's on the armor for the Vault of Glass doesn't go anywhere else outside of Vault of Glass. So there's no real reason for me to have it. I can go to the dungeons. I can farm up high stat armor, get to trip, double or triple 100s or pretty close to it, off of regular stuff in the game regularly and not have to deal with it. You got King's Fall. Okay, yeah, we're chasing um, Touch of Malice, which got nerfed because everyone was bitching about it. Oh, no, heaven forbid we have fun. We got to nerf the game. Got to nerf the gun because people are having fun with it. I, I don't understand. Again, this comes down to lack of testing and identification of testing by Bungie, which I'm going to talk about in a second, too. But then you have the Prophecy done to all this stuff. There's nothing really from there that makes a game-changing impact that says I have to go do Endgame. I don't. There's nothing. We can go all these worlds. That's fantastic. EDZ. Oh, look, I can do a bunch of missions down here. I can do public events. I can queue the, the strikes that don't give me any reward for doing them. Uh, I can do the lost sectors, master lost sectors to get uh, exotic pieces of armor, which is fairly easy to do. And you look at a legendary lost sector versus a master and the drop rate is nominal. It's 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 not worth running a, a master um, over a legendary. A legendary, I got almost all of my exotic pieces. If you go look here in my collections, I wish this game would run faster. I'm in orbit. Why should it take this long? Um, if I go to exotics, and I don't have all the weapon ornaments, but, you know, kinetics. Okay. There you go. Energy. There you go. Power. There you go. Now, the interesting thing on these weapons, I only use maybe five or six different exotic weapons. The rest of them are, are completely useless to me. I have all my armor from just running legendary lost sectors or getting the drops or, or Zur was selling it that week. I mean, I'm not missing anything, but there's really nothing to do in the game. So there, and 90% and, and of the time when you go to try and get them to drop, you're dealing with RNG. 
as well as crappy stat rolls. So there's no real way to control that one outside of putting something on your ghost. But again, it doesn't make or break you. You can still go do endgame. You can put on blue armor, 1570 to 1580 blue armor, and go do endgame. You can go take a piece of crap set of, of legendary 5, 1570 to 1580 armor right now and go through King's Fall just fine. I watched CB do it last night or the night before last. Well, he's trying to get his such amount with the mask on to put him at, I think he was running the raid at 1548. Sure, he's not doing peak damage. And sure, if everyone on his team was running that way, probably wouldn't have gotten done as fast, but they still did three phases. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, team, they figured out the complexity of the raids is not there. And using puzzles in raids is the stupidest thing in the world. Yeah, sure, they're fine to put in there. But don't make that the, the bulk of your mechanics for 90% of your raid. Vault, uh, Val. The disciple. I, I, I'm. That's. I know a lot of people say, "Oh, that's such a fun raid." You take the puzzles out. There's no mechanics to the bosses. There's none. Oh, shoot this, match this. Shoot this, match this. That tells me that you have to communicate with your team and play a matchmaking game, a memory game with cards, like I did with my do with my kids. That's not a game to me. You go back and look at the raids in Destiny One, and those were some raids. I miss that stuff. But so what made them great, I think they've gotten away from. And let's talk about the performance issues on the PC or on the consoles. Cheaters have gotten so bad that we, we, we pay the penalty. Now, I don't remember the statistics. I do remember that um, the bulk of the players, like two thirds of the player base or more, is PVE. Not PvP, but PvP directly influences our play because all this crap happening in PvP results in ability nerfs, weapon nerfs, and stuff like that. And the Bungie's starting to kind of separate those out, but because of how their engine is, it doesn't work. And their engine doesn't take advantage of the new technology, doesn't take advantage of the 40X, the RTX 40 cards, and the new processors. It's still crappy. It still lags behind. But they haven't done anything to address why there's such bad performance. You go to the tower, sometimes you can wait. 15, 20 seconds for your for your menus to open up, for the store to open up, for any of the, the vendors to open up. Oh, and let's talk about, let's talk about, like, okay, <laughs> lack of value. W what, what purpose does Zavala serve? What purpose does Banshee serve or uh, Shaxx? Uh, Icor has been re just brought down to uh, the basic of, I am, I'm going to let you come meditate and unlock some abilities. She serves no purpose whatsoever. The gear that you can get off of Shaxx or off of um, Dipstick Zavala, they're under light because, oh, no, we don't want you to climb up and get power creep too fast, even though there's so many ways to get your light level up. So the armor has it is, is both under light and has on typical somewhere between four high 40s to low 50s for the attributes. So the armor is completely crap. And then your idea of like, oh, we're going to give you once a season, you're going to go run through, um, go through your season rank on it so you can pick up a weapon, reset it, and then do the thing, same thing all over again to get a freaking ornament to make the weapon look cooler. And half the time, the ornament looks like crap and the gun's crap. There's no reason to run it. So there's no incentive. That's the same thing for shacks. Now, at least with Banshee, you, you're getting some bounties, you're getting some gear, you might be able to pay the pistol and everything that's nice. That's fine. Zur, you got a chance to get some, some exotics, kind of. Zur's gotten better. I think the most valuable vendor out of everybody that's still out there um, is, is Zur. The rest of them, I don't need them. Well, you got Ada 1 uh, and Shaxx or um, Banshee where you can get weapon mods and stuff like that. So those are kind of useful, but but the, the armor and the weapons, eh, they serve no purpose. They really serve no purpose whatsoever. Amanda Holiday, oh, look, you want to go buy a, a ship or something? Oh, you know what she serves a purpose of? If you have a, a Amazon Prime account and it's linked to your Twitch or linked to your account or something, you can go out and claim the ornaments and stuff. She serves as the, as the delivery mechanism in game to pick that stuff up. That's it. That's it. There's nothing else. Uh, Hawthorne, she gives you bounties and raid banners. whoop de doo And you can use her to pick up pinnacle stuff if you're trying to pick up light. But with the light changes they're going to be making here in a couple seasons, doesn't really matter. These vendors are, are useless. 
they've nullified all the content in the game, at least in my opinion. And this is where people are starting to say, what's the point? But if you say anything about it, like I'm saying, and I'm going to catch a lot of flack for this, that, oh man, you just, you just hate the game. If you don't like it, what do you play? Do you even understand what this game is? Um, I'm going to show you something here. For Destiny. You see how many hours I have played in Destiny 2? 4,765 hours. I love the game. I have a love-hate relationship with the game. I want to stop playing the game, but I can't. I get bored and there's nothing else to play because there's no other games out there to play right now. There are games on the horizon, though, and Bungie doesn't care. Bungie doesn't have any competition to inspire them to do more or to do better. But once those come out and they see it, you got problems. But if you go look, like, at Twitch, and we go look at the, the categories here, um, this used to be something at night I would see 15, 16,000 viewers on, on average. First the sentence beta is done, but there's eight people's view on it. New World, not the best. Boom. Call of Duty always does good. You know, so you've got these different things out there. They're not competing. And they're like, oh, we don't have to compete. And people are like, well, if you don't like it, go play it. Well, a lot of people are deciding, again, as I said, my fire team. I mean, look, Evan, he's a D2, D2 streamer. He's not playing D2. He's now expanding and starting to play other games. He came out, made a tweet about it. He's got to diversify. Glad did the same thing years ago. Instead of being dedicated to just Destiny 2, he started playing other games. Sweat is currently playing Destiny 2, but he started playing other games. CB Gray does the same thing. All of these guys and gals and people that play the game are starting to play other games. Why? Because Destiny 2 is, is having a huge fall off because they not they stopped communicating with the community, in my opinion. They stop now they get they're like and they're hiding behind the fact that oh there's toxic people out there when you shouldn't have to take that kind of abuse. And I agree with that. You should never attack the developer. Never attack the developer. However, I will say you need to hold the developer accountable for what their game is. I have paid money for Destiny 2 this year. I have paid money for it last year. And as a game consumer and somebody that has spent money on the game, I have expectations, rights, and demands that should be met by the developer and the publisher that have not. Why is PC neglected? Halfway through COVID, they came out and said, oh, yeah, we're sorry. We neglected the PC. And all these people that were trying to go out and get uh, graphics cards, which were already extremely hard to get, way out of price because that was cryptocurrency mining. Thankfully, that's changed a little bit. We're all thinking that their cards are bad. I know three streamers personally went out and bought new cards thinking that would solve the problem, and it wasn't them. I run a 3090 and had a 2080, a 2080 Ti then, too that took 30 to 40 FPS hits because Bungie couldn't prioritize or optimize their game for PC. They didn't do proper testing. And then people come at me and they said, if I, if I say Bungie didn't do proper testing, all they want to hear is I said, Bungie didn't test it. Bungie hasn't done any proper testing. Bungie hasn't done any proper testing in a long time. They've come out and said, oh, we get better results out of our, of our game if we just on day one turn it loose to the community and they'll find the bugs for us. I work in an enterprise environment. I'm going to tell you right now, if I had that mentality and I turned that on in a production environment that was ge revenue generating and I was like, oh, we just got to wait for the users to tell us the bugs and then we can go take it out. We can't reverse that. I get fired. But that's what they're treating us at. But we make up comprised million players on average, a couple hundred, 800, 800,000. I don't remember what the numbers are. There's a lot of us. But that's how they treat us. And everyone's okay with it. They justify it. They make excuses for it. And they make excuses for all the developers. Mentality and testing burned uh, CD Projekt Red with 20, uh, Cyberpunk 2077. It burned them bad. And they're still recovering. And they did some creative things with the an anime and everything. It was really well done. Uh, Edge Runners on Netflix to help them recover and Witcher Project, but they're being more transparent with what they're doing and how they're fixing their Q&A and their testing process. Instead of using something that a process and, and set of procedures and stuff that are 15 to 20 years old, you're forward thinking, you're looking forward and using uh, uh, machine learning uh, and AI 
uh, kind of steps to help. Hey, we got all this data. We've collected all this player data analytics. Here's the weapons data analytics. Here's the armor analytics. Here's the ability analytics. Here's all this stuff. Here's one big set of databases. Um, take this pre-made in AI environment where you can go get the servers for about 70,000 bucks, get six of them, cluster them together, take the program out there that can be adapted to the gaming environment relatively easy um, for a couple hundred thousand dollars. Go buy or um, hire a couple guys that specialize in that realm and let them run with that data. You don't have to have graphics, but instead they can simulate tens of thousands of weapon combinations and scenarios inside this environment that would cost less than a million bucks. And that's a drop in the bucket for what Bungie's spending. And a lot of them spend, but no one wants to hear that. No one wants to hear forward thinking. They're just like, let them go. They, they've, they got a small step. They've, been, they've expanded. They've got Bungie money, uh, Sony money now. Now, not all that money is for Bungie itself to go to Destiny 2 or any of that other stuff, but they've got the resources and they've been hiring. What's the, what's the excuse? There is no excuse, and I think that's one of the reasons why I see now more than ever. My friends, they get done. They log into the game they're on Tuesday at reset. They get whatever then is in there that needs to be done, and they're done. I'm a Tuesday person. I am actually back to a point now where it's, uh, I might log in every other Tuesday to play the game. And the only reason I'm in the game right now is to show stuff that's in here for the purpose of this video. I could go on much, much further. I would love to know in your comments below what you think the reason the bungee is struggling so much and if you say well it's like a roller coaster they have their highs when the seasons come out and their droughts i'm not talking about content screw freaking content yes destiny 2 has a crap ton of ton content but it doesn't have any reward for time played nothing nada the triumphs are where most of my time comes from when i cared about that stuff i don't care about an emblem i don't care about a freaking shader so much i don't care about a triumph title or a seal title all that stuff is just oh look what i did it does make no impact whatsoever to how i play the game it has no bearing whether or not the game is fun but constantly coming into a game that gets nerfs at the drop of a hat that's not fun or when the season launches you have 23 to 24 major bugs cause downs and and outages and and, and downtime and false claims and error messages and intrusive behavior that is just horrific um it's 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 just a bad experience it does not feel fun my nine-year-old or he loves playing games with me and he's played destiny 2 since he was i think six and a half he won't touch the game anymore he's it's just not fun dad quote unquote it's just not fun he's like i don't understand how you could play this game it's not fun. There's nothing to it. He's freaking nine and he's got a 1578 character. And he's like, that's nothing fun. There's nothing to do it. There's, there's no reason to play it. He goes out and he plays a lot of other games. So what about this game, other than the love, hate that we relationship that we have with it? What, what is there for us to go after? What is the end game for PVE? PVP is a whole different ball of wax because they're not properly spec'd out for combat or esports or any of that other stuff. But that's a different thing. I don't PvP, so I can't talk much about it. Other than the fact that PvP has negatively impacted PvE. And so has Gambit. PvE, PvP. PvE, PvP. Whatever that is you call it. PvP, PvE. But yeah, right. It's negatively influenced stuff and nerfs to guns and weapons and armors and all that stuff. Instead of having fun. I don't enjoy it. If I'm going to spend money on a game, I, I don't want to be... Oh, you know what your reward is? Um, we're going to let you figure out what our bugs are for the first week. You're going to wait for an answer on what we're going to fix. And then we're going to tell you in our weekly twabs that we're going to nerf more guns. We're going to make these changes. And we're never going to address the actual underlying core issues of the game. But I paid money for it. And they're like, oh, this is a free-to-play game. This is not a free-to-play game. This is a free-to-try game. And if you want to keep playing it, you have to pay for it. I know this because, again, my nine-year-old, when he started six and a half, he hit the free stuff. And then he would rotate that through and it left the X-Pass. We had to go buy stuff. And then they brought stuff out for Epic so he could try the latest stuff. And it was gonna, in a way, it's free to try, not free to play. Free to try. And then if you want to play it, you have to pay for it. It's just not. It's just not worth it. So I have officially requested from steam a refund for lightfall 
and I will wait to find out if Lightfall is worth it. I don't care to do the day one raiding stuff. Weapon crafting doesn't bug me because I can play whatever weapons I want. I'm sorry. But I'm not sorry. Let me know in the comments below. And I know this video went long. And I'm sorry about that. I just had to get it out there. Anyways, let me know if you're still enjoying Destiny. Let me know what you don't like about Destiny. What do you let me know in the comments below what you wish they would talk about to get it fixed? I want core responses. I want stability issues. I want latency issues talked about. I want technical stuff, not just, oh, this gun's doing this or that. I need something that means something to the game. Uh, and if you find this useful, I do, I do a diverse amount of games. I'm going to do a lot of technical talk and, 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 and whatnot. Subscribe if you want. But this pisses you off? Let me know why I pissed you off in the comments below, too. I got thick skin. I can take it. I'm a grown man. Anyways. You guys have fun out there. Don't let your ghost shit shot and have a great time and um, teach their own. I love you guys. All right. Bye.